What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Fit, Healthy, and Most of All Happy Podcast. As always, I'm your coach and host, Josh, here with his co host and co coach, KG, and I'm in the house. And we got a short and sweet episode for you today. We're going to be talking about seven easy, healthy habits that will indeed change your life when you add these into your routine. These are small things that will give big results, and these are totally free. All seven of these, these are seven things that will just radically transform your journey. So make sure you aren't overlooking these small things. Anything you want to add, Kyle, before we jump in? Yeah, just the fact is that they're they're simple, right? I think it's so easy to just overcomplicate it, think you need to do a million things, but just each one, you take the time to do it. Like Josh said, it'll give you some great return on investment. And uh, without further ado, I say we jump right into it. Absolutely. And even for me, like as we prepare this, I even see things where I'm like, I can improve this in my life. Like these are seven things we can constantly revisit to improve, to get better. And like I said, these are small things that kind of connect those dots or the structure to our life that will help us get to that next level and build that foundation. But I'm not gonna build it up anymore. We're gonna jump into it. So first and foremost, we have the key importance to make sure you're scheduling time to exercise, meal prep, eat healthy, just to make sure you have time in your life to be a healthy person. It's so easy to let life get in the way. Maybe you're taking care of kids, you're going to work, you have a million priorities, you're studying. It's so easy to put precedence to these things and let our health fall to the wayside. We've been there, I think the school example is perfect because when you're studying, your head's in a book, you feel like you have no time for anything else. But to me, exercise is that one step back, two steps forward. I've always liked to say when I was in school, I challenged people, I'm like, you're not studying all day. Let's be honest here, like science has shown if you go to the gym for an hour, you're gonna feel mentally refreshed, you're gonna be able to focus better, and it's gonna break it up. And most importantly, you're gonna take care of yourself because if you spend four, eight, however long it takes to get whatever degree you're looking to get, you spend all this time and you get that degree and you're all nice and happy, but you lose your health in the process, you're completely out of shape, you have no foundation, you can't move your body, right you're already stressed that is no way to live it's really important you make a priority for this and you might say i listen to this podcast i'm already a fit healthy and happy person but even more so we could be on top like on point with going to the gym five times a week but we could be horrible with our nutrition we could be just grabbing quick things that we know aren't the best making compromises so it is important we schedule that time to pre-log to prep some food to maybe go a little bit of our way to go to the healthier place to get the better order anything along these lines like if health is your priority you need to make your priority and you got to make the time for it kyle loves the example that'll literally put little things that maybe you just naturally do in his calendar to remind him that it needs to get done and it's a non-negotiable because these things should be non-negotiable and you neglect this once again for one two three five ten years you're going to see that compound negatively whereas you're always making time for it through any challenge of your life, having kids, being in school, new job, craziness, moving, whatever it is, you're going to continue to find ways to progress, see your body improve, to become healthier, to become more adaptable. And that's how you're going to get that edge. And when it comes to scheduling, and a lot of people think that it it's going to consume them and they have to do it for hours and hours. I've shared this before, but I do use Google Calendar. And what I love is you can have recurring events, which makes it easier to build habits. It takes literally a few minutes. Each Sunday, I'll sit there and I'll put in anything that's out of the ordinary. We have a DEXA scan coming up, so I have that in the calendar. We have little things that we're not used to, so I'm like, okay, I know that this is happening. I gotta stay. Even Josh shared that with me, and I'm like, man, that's amazing, because now for the next week, we gotta keep dialing in. Like, You start to take note of these things instead of just being all over the place, instead of forgetting, and especially with workouts, it's so easy to just skip them when you don't have that scheduled. So anyways, Josh had some great points there, and I'm gonna jump in to number two, which is just developing a morning routine. Now, this is going to look different for each person. For some people, they're in the gym by 4.30. For some people, it's sitting down with your family, you know, having breakfast, having a coffee. For some people, you're meditating, walking, doing yoga, whatever. It's going to be different for each person based off of what your situation is, how much time you have, what leaves you feeling the best. But I cannot stress enough how important this is. And I'm willing to bet a lot of people do not have a morning routine. If you're running around with, you know, it's kind of just like with your head chopped off, you're not sure what you're doing, what to do, and any of that stuff, it's gonna be very hard to feel great throughout the rest of the day. You're likely gonna feel overwhelmed, stressed, and the way I look at a morning routine is like you're putting your armor on for the day. So whatever happens, I've meditated, I've journaled, I've gone on my walk, I've done my morning work, 
whatever it is, I've got my armor on. I'm feeling good and nothing can stop me. And it's just a good reminder to just spend some time. And once again, it could be 30 minutes, it could be 90 minutes, whatever you can allocate, do the things that leave you feeling the best and set you up for success. And it's going to pay you back over and over again for the rest of your life, but also for the rest of the day, especially. We say it all the time, a million things can pop up through the day, a million places you need to go, things tugging and pulling you of places to be, people calling you with emergencies all the time. But to me, the morning is my time where I can really set myself in a position where even if my whole day gets shot and it's just all over the place, I've already banked some really good time. I've done what I need to do. And even the key thing with morning routines is so easy to look at these crazy routines and even maybe our routine is really daunting and you're like, that's ridiculous. Can't do that every day, but the morning routine is a goal and you can prioritize what you want. Meditation for me is huge. I find a place to do it in the day every day pretty much, but sometimes I can't get to it in the morning. If I'm really busy, I'll put priority on things I need to do. Some things in my routine will be ultra small, but they'll connect dots, like little points of review. I make sure to fill up my spreadsheet to make sure all my food's logged, to get ahead with my pre-logging. And me doing these small, minute things actually make my day easier. So this can be a time where you can do that one steps backwards, two steps forward and actually prep yourself for more success in the day. Just the same, me getting that walk out of the way the first thing in the morning and to be outside to get sunlight, just it optimizes my day right off the get. And especially, I think you set the tone of the rest of your day with how you start, because how you start is how you finish. So Kyle nailed there, this is such a big one. And this is something I'm constantly playing with, optimizing and just making the best I can. Number three, if you listen to Monday's episode, I mentioned how I've really been working on expressing gratitude when I journal every day I write three things that I'm grateful for Um, but past that I've really just been trying to say all the things I'm thankful for even the small small tiny things like if you're drinking coffee at a mug say I'm thankful that I have this coffee and that I have this mug if you're in the gym you're thankful that you can be in the gym and get that workout and it really changes the attitude of having to do things so instead if you say I'm grateful I get to work out instead of I have to work out or I'm grateful I'm able to eat such high quality healthy food when other people may not have access to it that is another thing to be grateful for and you can really reframe things that might seem negative or things that you might take for granted to be extreme positives in your life. And the more you think this way, it's like a muscle. You can train yourself to see the light in situations, to be that grateful, to be that positive, to be that upbeat person. Because when you try to change your mind to be glass half full and see those positives, you're gonna see more of that. Like if you buy a yellow car, you see more yellow cars. And it's the same with gratitude. The more you can express it, the better you feel. Whereas we know people that are always negative and bitter and it's everything always comes back to that and you don't wanna be around that person. So this is a great opportunity. Just throughout the day, remind yourself, express gratitude. If it's so foreign to you, you can even make your wallpaper just a text, express gratitude. Be a reminder whenever you see it to think of what you're grateful for in that moment. Even me, when I'm in really uncomfortable situations, we're at Formula One, or in the bleachers, if you've been to Formula One, you probably know they're these tight little spaces. Everyone's sardined around you. The sun's beaming on your head. There's someone behind me had his knee on my back. Like he had to be at the front of his chair. I was so close saying, just sit back in your chair, man. But I was thinking, I'm grateful that I'm at this amazing event. I'm completely safe. I'm not like in an unsafe situation. I'm warm. I'm all these things. And it really reframed it. And I'm like, why am I being negative and complaining about this? And sometimes too, even like if I'm having a hard time falling asleep, I lately have really just been reminding myself like I'm safe. I'm warm, I'm dry, and like it's just, even that alone is the best. Because when you're outside and you're freezing, you're in a weird situation, you just, all you crave is to be warm. But it's so easy to be in the best situation, be thinking, oh, but this situation would be better if I had this super fancy thing, or I was with this super famous person or something. But sometimes when you look at it at a really basic level, it can elevate your life so much, and it can make that situation so much easier. So that's a tip I've been doing, and I hope that helps you out. Yeah, absolutely. You just cannot be angry and grateful at the same time. So just remember that it's something that's so important, and Josh nailed that. And uh, jumping into number four is just getting out into nature, spending time out side in any way possible it's just it's so peaceful it feels incredible sunshine or not whatever it is just being outside is just incredible and even for me it's first thing in the morning phone is off birds are chirping you know sometimes the sun's up sometimes it's not but it just feels so great and i think a lot of people don't realize how amazing it is and even just like each wednesday with us going mountain biking and just being in the forest and being outside like just in there like it's just i started to realize i'm like why 
why does why do Wednesdays feel so great? We just were in nature for an hour, just with like peace and quiet, just being fully present, enjoying that, or maybe a weekly hike for you, like whatever it is, just spending time in nature. For me, it's just doing those walks consistently and then sprinkling in different types of forest adventures where they, you know, Josh shared before, it's called forest bathing, I believe. And it's just, it, there's nothing better than that feeling. And I highly recommend spending time outdoors. A lot of our clients go for lunch walks. Some people will go for evening walks after dinner, but just get out there. It's going to leave you feeling great and it's going to compound in so many different ways what's cool about being outdoors and one thing i love if you have a dog when you let that dog outside it's like something lights up in them like they just get so happy and humans are very much the same way when they're in a situation they like we can just be a little bit bitter and we can sometimes be hermits inside and it can be hard walking out the door but when we're in truly beautiful nature and you're just present and expressing joy in that moment it's the best when you're at a gorgeous beach or an amazing countryside or in the forest and even if you look around your neighborhood for things like that like you look for new little plants and you appreciate the sun like little things going back to the gratitude it can make it that much better and even just sun on your skin is one of the best feelings and reminding yourself of the negatives can sometimes get you the positives just the same for me with winter like all the time in winter i'm just like i would kill just to see sun like it's been seven days it's dark it's cold it's gloomy it sucks the sun goes down at like 5 p.m and then in the summer it's so easy like i don't want to go outside today it's too hot but it's a good reminder when you look at that other side and you're like i'm going to go enjoy the most of this and make the most of that time and work around your situation if it's raining a lot throw on an umbrella put on a raincoat get out there enjoy it if it's insanely hot like in florida what i like to do when i'm there is i'll try and make sure i double down on going on walks strolls exploring as the sun sets because it's less intense and you can still get out or really early in the morning so you got to know these windows and make the most of your situation don't let those obstacles really just restrain you from having that amazing experience so that is another amazing one and number five is to make time for downtime we're big on go 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 crushing your goals succeeding personal development but it's really important that you make time to do things you like that are true to you even if there's the silliest things like or i'm not saying it's silly but if you like knitting and that fulfills you you got to make sure you make time to knit you need to be in there doing what makes you feel great if you're someone who just loves to socialize make sure you're making time to be with your friends if you're big on cooking do that don't let life get in the way just like i said prioritizing exercise and nutrition and health and self-awareness it's really important you make time for yourself because if you're just a stress case you're going to be working at a very very limited capacity than if you were actually in a great state of mind you're motivated you're excited so Find things you like, do them within reason. Don't just numb yourself from the challenges of life and use them to get in the way of everything, but do things that make you fulfilled, rested, relaxed, whatever they are, even if they're silly. And the best part is if you have like a crazy life and things are always on the go, referencing back to number one, you can use a calendar and schedule it in if that's something that you feel like you need to do to hold you accountable. I remember when I was training, I had the craziest days. I had to to force myself to give myself that hour to, to do whatever it is that leaves me feeling fulfilled on top of that training. And I know a lot of people just you're like, I can't even find the time. But if you sit there on a Sunday or whatever it is, and you're like, you know what, I'm going to make the time, it's going to leave you feeling incredible incredible, feeling, feeling rested. You're going to want to tackle every area of your life when you just feel that way. You feel rejuvenated. We all know that feeling and uh, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, number six is just consistently read and learn. And there's so many different things, courses, podcasts, audiobooks. I mean, listening to this alone, you're already one step ahead of most people out there. Just find time to integrate it in. Whether it's a drive, like let's say you have half an hour drive to work, it's an amazing time to just learn, to listen to something that's going to help you grow. And I know recently I talked about stress management, how I always sprinkle things in such as the sauna, such as meditation, such as walking to help me just fulfill myself and feel incredible. But I'm that way with learning as well. You know, even just in the morning, I'll sit down for 15 to 20 minutes and read the book first thing before going for the walk. And then on the way to Josh's house, it's about a 20 minute drive. So I'll do about 15 minutes of an audiobook or podcast and then do a bit of music to hype myself up. And then on the way home, I'll do the same. There's a lot of different times that once you look in the day where you can sprinkle it in, or you could just do an hour of reading before bed, whatever it is that fits your schedule, your lifestyle, but spend time learning, growing. You weren't meant to just pay bills and die and never evolve. Like spend that time, you're gonna feel incredible and you're gonna just evolve your skill sets. Even if it's learning a new language, trying a new skill, like there's so many amazing things, you're gonna feel incredible and I highly recommend it. 
And last but not least is have someone to hold you accountable to what you want to do. This could be a friend, this could be a family member, this could be a workout buddy, but have someone who's there when you're not at your best to kind of keep you in track and have that person in the back of your mind that you're like, oh, X, Y, Z is going to say I should be in the gym today, even though I don't feel like it. That'll get you there. That'll bring you up that you can talk to when things are hard. Great example of this is we would love to be that person. Having a coach is gonna help you get through any obstacles, see around corners, and make sure that you can be accountable to seeing your progress because it's hard to break these cycles and these habits and to have this self-awareness. It takes quite a bit of work, but you can alleviate that work by taking the guesswork out and having someone on your team to optimize everything for you so you can just focus on doing it instead of being overwhelmed by all this stuff going on. So if you wanna learn more about our coaching, you can click that in the first link of this episode. You can learn more that way. That takes you right to our website. It tells you more about what we do, how we approach training, nutrition, as well as accountability. So if you haven't checked that out, I highly recommend you do, but those are seven tips to level up and this is gonna help a lot. So I really hope you apply something from today's episode because it will indeed go a long way, but I wanna say thank you everyone for tuning in. We will see you on Monday. Peace out.